20th century, African American migrated to cities in the United States and Washington D.C. became the main accumulation area for them to settle down. Washington had no power at that time, weakened few people's inability to protect themselves from disease and poverty. The long housing crisis caused a huge number of African Americans live in alley dwellings, and almost 90% are low-income workers. Policymakers aimed at coping with this goal. They decided to upgrade the whole neighborhood in order to make lower-income blacks to find their suitable alternative housing in the area. In 1952, Joint Committee on the National Capital issued first redevelopment project and considered this low-income housing area in the image as a very questionable asset. Blacks were particularly in the inner city, and whites crowded the suburbs. Southwest Washington D.C. was experiencing a long housing crisis from 1870 to 1945. Historically, this part was isolated from the city. This 1793 map shows a triangular southwest quadrant, a lower left center, which was isolated from the city. There were large proportion of poor black residents lived here. Some later reformers included Washington Improvement Company in the early 20th century, Alley Dwelling Association in the 1930s, and National Capital Housing Authority in 1943 decided to precede urban development, including slum reclamation and construction of low-rent housing. Until the mid 20th century, Southwest region. Has been the home of blacks and considered as the typical Dickeny. The area has approximately 23,000 residents, and more than 70% were black population. Nearly 90% were low-income population. With the flood of World War II workers, the capital was urged to build new plan for improving Southwest housing. The Defense Housing Coordinator called this area the nation's leading housing problem. American Public Health Association discovered that there were less than 20% of units were owner-occupied. People were hard to find affordable housing. A director of the Homeowners Loan Corporation in 1942, Arthur Goodwill, proposed a redevelopment plan for Southwest. Considering that the area close to federal jobs and suitable for bettering low-income workers, the plan also came with bettering the living condition, which was really suitable for low-income families. The next 20 years, Southwest experienced destruction and rebuilding. The urban renewal plan forced 1,000. 500 businesses and 23,000 residents moved off from Southwest. The site had previously contained some dilapidated dwellings. Instead, new housing, commercial structures, community facilities, and government office building were wholly reconstructed. The 5,800 new units of housing accommodated smaller and more affluent population. New Southwest provided new residents, churches, parks, regional theater, and schools. Renewal also replaced previous small-scale commercial industrial infrastructure by large-scale. The Redevelopment Land Agency. And the National Capital Commission were established by federal government to complete slum clearance in Southwest D.C. There were 19% of the buildings were removed, and 5,900 new units were constructed. Only 310 people could be classified as moderate income. Relocation program were processed in 1955. There were 2,000 families moved into private rental units, and only 391 purchased private homes. The following Washington D.C. urban renewal took considerations of where to relocate the people. In order to enhance emotional scars and protect public health, their relocation process divided into several steps. The staff 
We'll do door-to-door -door survey to ask related questions like what to improve and what are their thoughts. After doing so, they left an informational pamphlet to each family. According to family income, they provide corresponding real estate agent to each family. Their new dwellings must be equipped standard facilities, and meantime, they will get two hundred dollars moving expenses after passing inspection. In 1956, the first new housing project is Capitol Park. It is fully completed in 1965, which is five high-rise buildings contained 1,700 total units. This was designed by architect Woodard Smith. The brand new style created fabulous and incomparable open view, but meanwhile cohesive community with new neighborhood. Just two years later, the building was completely occupied. Capitol Park became the first high-quality building in Washington. But less than two percent blacks were able to live here. To make it more affordable, the RLA proposed to reduce overall rents to average rent per room of fifty-four dollars. Urban renewal indeed destroyed many of the churches in Southwest. The eight new institutions were brought to the neighborhood. One was built near the waterfront and replaced two previously existing Episcopal churches. Saint Augustine aims at fulfilling residents' interests and was one of several earliest new churches. From 1950s to 1970s, there was a plan to build a complete freeway system. The Southwest Freeway was completed in D.C. in the late 1960s. The area includes the Ninth Street Expressway, which mainly comprises a north-south freeway from the Southwest Freeway to Constitution Avenue. The 14th Street Bridge was completed in 1950. The total plan was to build a freeway loop around the city, and a road was called the Inner Loop or Inner Loop Freeway. Except of slum clearance, rebuilding of new housing, churches, and freeway, urban renewal also includes improving parks and recreational space. Planners established many spaces like Randall Recreational Center, which include softball fields, tennis courts, volleyball, and basketball courts. There were several firms like Wallis and Todd Design. The most representative is Waterside Parks. Post-war urban renewal was planned nearly ten years and did not proceed successfully from ideas to outcomes. Its consequences not only brought brand new cityscape, but also yielded disappointments along the way. People were separated from each other, and someone was sent to places they have never been before. Huge amount of people lost their property and without compensation. However, the pioneers took advantage of imperfect natural environments to develop relatively successful housings and brought in the real glory.